gold. What an interesting thing, an interesting metal, you know? But why the hell do we as human beings like gold so much? I mean, why do we value it so much? I mean, for real, it's nothing more than a rock. I mean, yeah, it's shiny. It's a yellow rock. But nonetheless, it's a rock. Personally, I'm more of a fan of obsidian. That's way cooler looking than a piece of gold. But for whatever reason, people just like gold. It became a thing back in the day, and it was likely on a Wednesday, and so now here we are on a Monday talking about gold in the world today. You see, the African country of Zimbabwe has been suffering some major economic crisis. Like, wicked bad inflation. I mean, over and around 250% inflation. The economic situation in the country is intense, to say the least. And last month, the government announced and introduced a gold coin as new legal tender slash currency in the country to try and help fight that inflation. Because you see, gold is priced at the international level. So theoretically, the new gold coin as legal tender and currency in the country should not lose value. And if people start using these en masse, well, you see where it's going. Only problem, they cost about $2,000 a coin. So yeah, but right in, what do you think? Using gold as a country's currency. Good idea, bad idea, I'm curious your thoughts. We'll be keeping an eye out on Zimbabwe for sure. But next up, let's head west of Africa and on over to Central America. To Mexico we go. And do you remember where you were eight years ago? Do you remember in 2014? when 43 Mexican students just disappeared on a bus trip. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or has the world kind of just forgotten about these students, about these these 43 people who disappeared? Eight years is a long time. And there was lots of talk about cartel and government cover-ups and eventually the finding of a mass grave. And I won't go into more details. You'll have to look it up yourself. But But now the former attorney general of Mexico, he's been arrested in connection with the mishandling of this case back in 2014. And a hell of a lot more people have arrest warrants issued for them right now as well. Like around 80 people or so. Like, look, people, I I understand if you've never heard about this happening back in the day in 2014. But this is a big deal, and it was a big deal for a lot of us for a long time. And it's nice to see that even after such a long time, Someone out there is still looking for the answers for those students. And we'll keep you updated for sure. Now let's move on over a little bit south to Nicaragua and a bit east to the Vatican slash Catholic Church, question mark. So the scoop is, so saith the Pope, that the government of Nicaragua has arrested a bishop, some priest, expelled some sisters, expelled a diplomat, stopped church services, and shut down Catholic radio stations. All because the government believes the Catholic Church in Nicaragua are pro the opponents of current resident president asshole of Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega. And looks, people, I'm not going to go into detail today about why President Ortega is indeed the resident president asshole of the country, though we'll get to that soon enough, I'm sure. But damn, there's two possibilities at least here that's going down. If you, as a government of a country, arrest a bishop, some priest, expel some sisters, expel a diplomat, stop church services, and shut down Catholic radio stations, it's either A, the Catholic Church in Nicaragua is up to some shady-ass shit, or B, your government is up to some shady-ass shit. I mean, for real, people, this is an interesting case, and we'll definitely be keeping ears out, you know, trying to figure out what is going down between the Holy See and Nicaragua. But now let's head out west, over the Pacific Ocean, and let's make a stop on over in Myanmar, where the military performed a military coup on February 1st of last year, and haven't played nice since, and that is an understatement for sure. Keeping power for themselves, refusing to go back to democracy. Well, former Democratic leader and activist Aung San Suu Kyi was arrested last year on February 1st and has been convicted multiple times since of bullshit. We're just going to say what it is. And 
No, Aung San Suu Kyi is not perfect at all. She took a lot of heat for not taking up for the Rohingya minority in the country that the military targeted since 2017 and forced about 1 million people out of the country. No, she did not stand up to the military then. And two and a half years later, the military overthrows the democratically elected government and starts trying her and others. But the newest update is that the military has announced that after all her trials are over, which goodness knows how many are left, but afterward, they are considering allowing her to return home for a house arrest for what's likely going to be the remainder of her entire life. And really, I don't know what to say, people. I mean, Aung San Suu Kyi was under house arrest in the 90s and 2000s for a very long time. Because at that point, it was a military junta. But the military returned to democracy in 2011. Then Suu Kyi was able to take part in government. Then, ten years later, the military overthrows the government and are going to send her right back to house arrest. You know, we'll be following this one really closely, Lo-Fi listeners. And we'll let you know more when we do. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day, heading south of Myanmar to Singapore we go. So this is kind of bad news, good news type of thing, all wrapped in one. You see, the Prime Minister of Singapore went on TV in the country and gave a speech. And there's two major points that he talked about as it relates to LGBTQ plus rights in the country. Firstly, the Prime Minister talked about fortifying the definition of marriage in the country as being between a man and a woman. So, obviously not good for LGBTQ plus rights. But then he also said in the same speech that the government was going to scrap a law that banned gay sex, which is a good thing for LGBTQ plus rights. But this is fascinating, you know, isn't it? That in one speech, a country's government can both hurt and help a cause for people's rights. The world is diverse, lo-fi listeners. But we'll be watching closely to see just what Singapore's government does next. But check us out tomorrow for top 10 freest countries in the world. And hey, it's not a cliche or a catchphrase. It's a lifestyle. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Pickering, signing off.